Hello everybody on YouTube. I am super excited to announce that I have completely redone the Nux 3 course that I have been selling on Udemy. So if you already bought this course, you can go ahead and reap the benefits of the new and updated course for absolutely free. It's just updated for you. However, if you haven't bought this course, I'm gonna have a link in the description below with a promotion for the absolute cheapest price that I can set it for, which is gonna be 9.99 USD. Now in this course, what are we going to be building? Well, we're gonna be building one project and it's gonna be one massive project that is gonna be relatively complicated and it's gonna involve a lot of the different features that Nux3 provides. So we're gonna learn quite a bit and we're gonna take you from Nux3 beginner to Nux3 expert, believe me. Now enough of that, what are we going to be building? Well, this is what we're gonna be building. Let's go right over here. We're gonna be building a website called Car Trader. So this is a, you can think of it as an auto trader clone where people can list their cars for sale on this website and other people can go ahead and contact them if they are interested in this car. So let's go ahead and give you a quick little tour of this website. So this is the homepage over here. And let's say I'm interested in cars in Austin. So I'm gonna go and say Austin and I'm going to search. So the first thing it's gonna do is it's gonna navigate us to a different page. So I'm gonna show you how we can have different pages within Nux3 and how the system works there. And now you can see all of the different listings. We can favorite a car if we like it. And if I don't like it, of course, I can not favorite it, favorite it and not favorite it. And this favorite actually persists upon refresh. Now, of course, let's just go ahead and remove that for now. Now we can also add more filters. So maybe I don't want uh, to filter by location or maybe I don't want to filter by Austin. Maybe I want to filter by Toronto. I can go ahead and see all of the cars that exist in Toronto. Now let's go back to Austin because we have two cars in here, which is nice. And over here, maybe I want to filter by a specific make. So maybe I want uh, Genesis. I don't want uh, BMW. Or you know what, I found BMW, so I'll just say BMW. And there we go. So now we can filter by the make. We can also filter by the min and max price. Now, of course, I could have added more filters, but that's just going to take more and more time. And at the end of the day, this is really working in the exact same way. So that's what we have here. Actually, let's go back to Austin. And let's go back to this page. And there we go. So now what we can do is let's say I'm really interested in a car. I'm interested in this one over here. I can go ahead and click on it to see more information about it. So it redirects us to a different page. So I'm looking at the car. I really like it. I think it's you know reasonably priced. So maybe what I can do here is I wanna send the person a message. So I'm gonna say, hey, my name is, I'm gonna change my name here. I'll just say, my name is Jake, Jake Paul, whatever. And <laughs> we'll say Jake, at hotmail.com. I'm gonna give them a phone number. Just give them like this random gibberish phone number. Say, I am interested in this car and I want to buy it. Please contact me. So we're gonna go ahead and actually send this off. And if when I click on this, you can see we get this nice error or nice message saying that the message was indeed sent. And what's really nice about this is we're utilizing the Nux3 server to create our own server with multiple different endpoints. So all this data is coming from our server and our server is hitting a Postgres database to go ahead and actually send that data back. So it's a complete application. We're gonna learn exactly how we can do that. All right, so this is what we have here and we have sent the message. Now, what also another nice thing that we have added here is, let's say we decide to put in some gibberish, like an email that's not really an email, we get an error message. So we have some uh, validation on the server side. Now, let's say the person that has created this listing, they can actually go onto their profile page. So we have some form of authentication and I'll show you that in a bit. But now the person can look at all of their different listings. So it just so happens that all of the cards that we've seen thus far have been created by me. And I can go over here, I can say, I can view all of the different messages and I can see, oh, Jake Paul's interested in my car. I'm gonna go ahead and give him a call or give him an email. So we can see all of this, uh, all of this uh, data is being persisted. Another thing I can also do is I can delete a listing. 
So there we go. We have completely deleted this listing and this is going to delete it from our database. And if I were to go back over here, if I were to go to Austin, for example, now we should only see one listing. We do not see two. And let's say I made a mistake. I actually want to add that right back. Well, we can create a listing. So I'm going to create a BMW M5 2019. We'll say the price is 100,000. We'll say miles is zero. We'll say the city is also Austin. And we'll add this. We'll add the number of seats to be five. Say this is a cool car that you should buy and I like it, whatever. And we can also add an image. So we're gonna learn how we can handle images and save them within our server. So I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna add this image. We get this nice little preview, click submit, and then it redirects us back to this page. And if I were to go back over here, you can see now it is nice and listed. So we have this listing right over here. Now, because we have this profile page, we actually have authentication. So let's say I went to my profile page and the profile page is this endpoint right over here, or sorry, this, uh, uh, this route. So slash profile slash listing, but let's say I go ahead and log out. So when I log out, it redirects me. Now let's say I want to go back to that profile page. You can see what we have is route protection. So if you're not authenticated, you can't go to certain pages. And what it allows us to do is it forces us to go to this login page where we can log in with Google. So we're going to learn how we can implement this OAuth authentication and we can go ahead and just log in here. And now we're completely logged in and we can go back to the profile page. So you can see that this is a complete, complete application and it is incredible. And, and you're going to learn so, so much about Nux3. Now I'm going to post the first two sections here on YouTube, just so you can get a feel of it, see if you like it or not, but all of the other sections, and this is a 12 to 15 hour course, all of the other sections are going to be on Udemy. Again, the description is going to be below. If you haven't purchased it, if you have purchased it, just go ahead and enjoy it for free. Now, because there's a lot of different templates that we have to use here, we have to build a lot of UI just so we can skip over that. I'm also going to link a GitHub starter project. So go ahead and install that. It's just a starter with just the HTML and we're using Tailwind for the styles. So you don't have to worry about that. We can just dive into Nux. Anyways, that's it. I hope you guys enjoy and I'll see you in the next one. So whether you have built the UI elements with me or you have completely skipped that section and downloaded the source code, you should have this code right over here opened up inside of a code editor. So this right here is a typical Nux application. It is completely boilerplate and empty. All that we have here is this HTML directory that contains three different HTML files that is going to contain all of our HTML as well as our CSS for all of the different pages and components within our application. So now let's actually go ahead and start adding it within our Nux application. So let's go over here and do an NPM install if you haven't done that already and you don't have your known modules and then do an NPM run dev inside of your terminal. So go over here and do an NPM run dev in order to run your application. Now, as soon as you run your application, you can see here that it tells you the port that it is going to listen on. Now, I already have port 3000 being used. So for me, it actually allocated 3002. However, for you, it will probably be 3000 if it is indeed not used. Nonetheless, you can just go over here and figure out exactly what it is. So now what you can do is you can go to localhost 3002 for me. And you can see here that there's a completely empty page. And now what we want to do is you want to add multiple pages within our application, because you can see here, if I were to go to the home page, you can see that we have this home page right over here. If I go ahead and search, it takes me to this page. And then if I go over here and let's say I click on this Porsche, it takes me to another page. So what we need to do is add routing within our Nux application. And we're going to begin very, very simply with routing for the home page. And this is going to have a very specific route of slash. So just the home page is as soon as we write the domain and we don't have any other paths, we want to hit this home page right over here and show the nav bar as well as the car hero. So that is exactly what we want to do. So again, once we go to localhost 3000 and then there's no other paths, 
that is what we want to hit so let's actually go back to our nux application right over here and you can see within our nux application we only actually have one view file which is the app dot view and I can go right over here and I could just say H1 and I can say hello like so. And if I were to go back to my application and I were to zoom in a little bit, you can see that we get hello, which is nice. Okay, so it seems that the home page, we have to add all of our different components within this page right over here or this file right here. But that's actually not the case. So what happens if I go to, let's say, localhost 3002 slash uh, cars, for example. If I were to enter this, you can see I still get hello. And if I were to go to another path slash whatever, I still get this component and this app.view file. So this app.view file is going to be a very temporary file that we're going to have. And what it does is it just, well, it matches with all different routes. It treats our application kind of like a single page application and it matches every single particular route. And it's like we don't even have routing at all. If we do want to add routing, what we're going to do is not define any code like we do in view, but instead what we're going to do is add a folder, a very specific folder in the root directory of our Nux application. And this folder is going to be called pages. And it absolutely needs to be called pages because Nux is going to understand exactly what this folder is doing and is going to treat all of the different files within it very specifically so that it can add routing to our app. So over here, we're going to add pages. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file called index.view. And this is actually going to be the new component that is going to be rendered whenever we go to the home page route. So whenever we go to the home page, which is just going to be the slash route, we're going to render this index.view. So let's go over here and I'm going to go ahead and just grab this template. I'm going to go ahead and paste it in here and we're just going to have our typical hello. So let's go back over here and let's just see what happens. So now you can see right away that we're getting some sort of error. And what I highly suggest you do is whenever we create something like this, let's just close our, our terminal and run back the Nux again. And so let's refresh this. So as soon as I refresh, you can see we're getting the loading state, blah, blah, blah. Come on. Come on, it's taking forever. And there we go. So you can see right away now when I go to this random route, we're actually getting a 404 page, which is pretty interesting. So let's actually go over here now to uh, localhost 3002. And now you can see that we have this hello. Whenever I go to again another path, we get a 404 page. So it seems as though that this file based routing is indeed working. Now, one thing that we can actually do here is within the app.view, what we can do is we can add a Nux page component. And this right here is going to be a very specific component that is going to detect exactly what view file it needs to render. So this Nux page is going to figure out what path that we're in. If we are on the slash path, then it's going to go look at the pages directory. It's going to look for the index.view and it's going to go ahead and render this right over here. So it's going to render this component here. And why this is nice is that now what we can do is we can add other things on top of it or below it. So for example, we can add a nav bar. So we're going to say here, nav and then over here we can add a footer so footer like so we can say footer like that so now we can have nav and then hello and then footer like so so we can actually kind of customize exactly what we have but for now we'll just leave it like this with the nux page so that's pretty much it but of course now we need to go ahead and actually populate our components or our our page with these components with this nav bar that's humongous and i have to zoom out so you can actually see it well so this nav bar as well as this hero so let's do that in the next video in this video what i would like to do is populate this page with all of the necessary components like the nav bar component as well as the hero 
So let's actually go over here and we're going to have to actually start creating some of these components. And let's begin with the nav bar, which is going to be by far the simplest thing that we have thus far. So I'm going to go ahead and create another directory and I'm going to call this directory components. Now the name of this is also extremely important because we're going to place all of our components in here. And as soon as we place view files in here, Nux is actually going to know that they're components because they're inside of this directory right over here. And it's going to do some special magic that we're going to see a little bit later. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to create a navbar.view file. And we actually already, well, wrote out the navbar HTML. So if we go to the home page, we can just go ahead and just grab this right over here. So where over here you can see it starts at navbar, ends at navbar. So just grab this HTML as well as CSS. And then we're going to go over to our navbar. We're going to create a template and we're going to go ahead and just paste this in right over here. So this is our navbar. And now what I want to do is I actually want to use it within the index.view file. So typically what we would do is we would actually import in that navbar component. So we would have some sort of uh, script tag right over here. We'll say script setup and we would just say very simply import navbar. And then we can say from, we'll move back a directory. We'll go components and we'll just say navbar. And then right over here, we can just go ahead and just render this navbar component. So that's typically what we would do. And you can see that this still works. This still is a viable solution. However, we actually do not need to do all of this inside of a Nux application. And that's because whenever we place something within the components directory, Nux is going to understand that it is indeed a component. And whenever we actually just go ahead and render that component within a page or another component, it is going to go ahead and auto import for us. So over here, I can actually remove all of this bloat and I can just go ahead and save this. And it's going to be smart enough to basically, well, do this under the hood. So we're going to go ahead and just save that. And now just to prove to you that we still have our nav bar, ta-da, we still have our nav bar. This is pretty incredible and it can make our code significantly cleaner. All right, so now let's actually go ahead and do the exact same thing, but this time for the car hero. So I'm going to go ahead and create another, uh, another component and I'm going to call this car hero. I'm going to say car hero dot view and I am going to go over to where are we? I'm going to go over to the home page. And I'm going to grab this car hero. So you can see here we have this comment here saying car hero. And we also have this end comment that also says car hero. So we could just grab all of the HTML within that and just copy that. And we can go over to car hero and we can go ahead and just create a template and just paste in all of that HTML. And now very simply, look at this. I can just go here and just say car hero, the exact same name of the file. And then, ta-da, we get our car hero. How cool is that? Now, one thing that I actually also want to do is I want to separate this uh, home search bar. So if you go to our final or if we go to this version over here, I actually want to separate this search bar into its own component because this search bar has quite a bit of functionality within itself. And I would like to kind of isolate it. So go, let's go ahead and do that. That should be pretty easy. I'm going to call this car search bar and we're going to say dot view and then over here i'm going to go ahead and just kind of cut everything within this so within this uh comments let's just go ahead and just cut everything out and we can also we'll cut this out a little bit later we're going to create a template and then over here and we're going to create that uh car search bar and now this time we're inside of a component, not a page. We can still treat it. We can still basically do the exact same thing. We can just say here now car search bar and we can go ahead and just save that. And if I were to go back to my application, it still renders that search bar. And if I were to, of course, comment it out just to prove to you, just go ahead and just comment this out. You can see that it is gone. Ta-da! Awesome. All right, so now we can just remove this. We don't need that anymore. 
So one thing that I also want to quickly note is that you can see here that within our component directory, it seems that for at least for these two components here, we have kind of a, a very similar uh, naming structure. So we have car and then hero car and then search bar and later on we're gonna have a lot of other components that are gonna follow that exact same uh, naming structure like car card or car uh, sidebar or whatever so one thing that's actually nice is that what we can do if we have this naming convention where we, we always start off with the exact same name and then we have other you know different names uh, after it what we can do is we can actually create a directory called car within our components file or components folder. And then over here, we can actually remove the car from these files. So we can just say, instead of hero, we can say, or instead of car hero, we can just say hero. Let's just skip these changes, it's fine. And we can just go ahead and actually move that in here now. So I'm gonna go ahead and just move that in there. And we're gonna do the exact same thing here. Let's go ahead and just change that and we're going to move that in there and we're going to say okay and now this is actually going to behave the exact same way the names is actually going to be exactly the same it's still going to be car hero even though our file now is just hero and that's because what ends up happening in the component directory is if we want to specify a specific file that is nested we would have to append both names together so concat both names together so it'd be car hero and then car search bar that's pretty neat and if i were to go back here of course if i were to refresh everything is working a okay so now that we are completely done with the home page, let us move on to the next page. And that is going to be whenever we search for a particular city. So let's say Ottawa in my case, I'm gonna go ahead and click search. It's gonna take me to this page over here. Now this page is gonna have the path of slash city slash Ottawa slash car. Now, the reason why Ottawa is in green is because this over here is going to be dynamic and is going to be dependent on whatever the user has decided to type. So if they didn't type Ottawa, instead they typed Toronto and we went ahead and looked at the route, you can see now it's slash city slash Toronto slash car. So you can see that this portion is always dynamic. And so we need to figure out a way to add this dynamic path within our Nux application. Now slash city and also slash car are going to be static. They're always going to be the same. Now, another thing that I also want to note is that whenever we actually go to the car page and then we change the make of the car. So for example, let's say I change the make to, I don't know, what's a nice car. Let's change it to Toyota. It's also going to change the path of our application. So it's gonna end up looking something like this. So slash city, slash Ottawa, slash car, slash Toyota. So this again is going to be dynamic. It could be Toyota, it could be Ferrari, it could be Bentley, it could be Hyundai. However, however, it is also going to be optional. So if we actually don't provide the make and we just have something like this, we should also have the exact same page. So whether we have the actual make as well, or we don't have the make, it is going to present us with the exact same page, meaning that this is not only dynamic, it is also optional. So we have to actually think about that when writing our uh, rules. Now, of course, we're not gonna write any code for this. We're gonna just create a bunch of files and folders. So I'm gonna go over here and within the pages directory, I'm going to create a bunch of other directories that are going to follow this path over here. So for example, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to create a directory. Actually, let's just create a file for now. And I'm going to call this city.view. We're going to delete this later, but just for demonstration purposes. So I'm going to create this right over here, city.view. And I'm going to do template div h1 and then city. So go ahead and save that. And now what ends up happening is if I go to my application and then I don't go to the uh, uh, slash index route, instead I go to the slash city route, you can see that I get a 404, which I was not expecting. And that's probably because I'm gonna have to go ahead and just close this terminal down and open it up again. 
And that's probably what you have to do most of the time whenever you change your uh, pages route. So the hot reloading is not very smart in that case. Let's just go ahead and just quickly do a little refresh here. And there we go. You can see now I actually have the city page. So now, of course, I can go back to the home page. I can go back to the slash city page. And I went to this page over here, which doesn't exist. So that's why we got this error. But if I go back to just city on its own, I go and I see this. So you can see that this is where we're going to create all of our different routing rules. It's within this pages directory. We're going to create a bunch of folders and files to specify those rules. So what I want to do is I want to have something like this. I want to have, and let me get rid of this for now. I want to have something like slash city. And then I want this part to be dynamic. So whatever the city is. So typically we would define that by doing something like this. So slash city and then slash car. And then I want to have the make, but again, I want this to be optional. So how are we going to do that? Well, let me go ahead and create another directory now. And this time it's going to be a folder, not a file, a folder. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say city. And then I'm going to say, or actually, well, we're going to say city in here. We're going to create that one city folder. And then within this city folder, we're going to create another folder. And that's going to mark the actual city. So whether it's Ottawa, Toronto, Los Angeles, whatever. Now, this is going to be a dynamic path. So how do we specify something to be dynamic and not static like this over here? Well, to specify something as dynamic, we wrap them in square braces. So over here, we're just going to say city. And we're going to wrap it in square braces. And city is just going to be the variable name. So over here, now we got that. So we got city slash the dynamic city. And now what I want to do is I want to create, well, another folder. This time it's going to be car. And then at the very end, this one's actually going to be a file. So we can actually, well, create our uh, HTML elements. So right over here, we're going to say file. And this one's going to be make like so. And it's going to be dynamic. So we're going to say make dot view like so. However, not only do we want it to be dynamic, we want it to be optional. Now, to make it dynamic and optional, very simply, we wrap it with double, double square braces like so. So now we can go ahead and actually add that in. And I'm going to go ahead and actually just remove this. We do not need this anymore. The city. So right over here, we actually added this path. So I'm going to go over here. I'm just going to say template div, and I'm going to say... Uh, city and make for now and uh, let's go we might have to refresh our page so now we can see we're getting a 500 let me just go ahead and just refresh our terminal and now what we're going to do is we're going to go to slash city and then slash whatever it doesn't matter what it is uh we're, well, let's just put something a little bit reasonable like let's say houston and then slash and then car and that should take us to this HTML template over here because again this portion right here is dynamic now we can also if we wanted to go to slash city slash Houston slash car slash Toyota and that should also take us to the exact same page so let's go ahead and give this a quick shot so we're gonna go over here we can see we're getting a 404 page I'm gonna go now to slash city slash Houston slash car and you can see we get city and make and now I'm going to go to slash city slash Houston slash car slash Toyota. And ta-da, we get the exact same thing. All right, so we have created that uh, uh, path. We have created it. So now what we actually need to do is start populating it with components. So let's actually do that in the next video. So now let's go ahead and actually start populating this with all of the components that we need. So of course we first need the nav bar. So let's go over to our file and we have already well created that nav bar component. So we can just now very simply just say nav bar. So we can say nav bar like so, and now we should see our nav bar. And now what we need to do is all the other HTML elements for our uh, component. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the cars.html you can see here where we have the car page. I'm going to go ahead and just copy everything between the car page comments. So let's go ahead and just copy that. And we're going to go over here to make. And we're going to go ahead and paste that in. 
And there we go. So now you can see we have this and we only have one card for now, but later on we'll render more. Now, of course, what I want to also do is separate a lot of these things into their own component. So let's begin with the car sidebar. So over here, let's just grab everything in between the car side sidebar. And we're just going to go ahead and just cut it out for now. This is going to be this thing right over here. And we're going to go to uh, we're going to go over here. We're going to go inside of the components directory inside of car. We're going to create a sidebar dot view file and we're going to say templates and we're going to go ahead and just paste that in there. And then over here, we're going to call car sidebar. Very simple car sidebar like so and we can also remove these comments. Okay. So that looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to go ahead and just save that. And now we have, we still have everything looking the same. Another thing that I do want to add now is two more components, one for the car cards and then one for the car card, the actual card itself. So the car cards is actually going to be a one div uh, uh, component. So let's go over here and let's go over here. We're going to say cards. So this is plural. And then over here, we'll also create another one, which is going to be card singular. All right, so let's go over here for the cards. It's just one div element right over here, which is going to be V full. So cards, we'll just say template and then V full. That's it. And then for the cards, we're going to grab everything in here. Just grab all of that. Let's cut that out and let's just create a template. And we're going to go ahead and paste that in there. Okay. And then inside of the cards, we're going to render that just one card for now. So we're going to say car card like so. And so now over here, we can actually completely get rid of all of this and very simply just say car and then card and then save that. And theoretically that should be it. So you can see here that everything is working a okay. The last page that we need to work on is this page right over here. So whenever I click on a particular car, I get redirected to the car details page. And this actually has a very unique path within itself. And this is the path that it has. So it's going to be slash car. This part is static. It's always going to be slash car, but then it's going to be slash and then the name of the car, in this case, it's Porsche. And then we have a dash that is always going to be there static. And then also we're going to have another dynamic ID. So it's going to be the name of the car, which is going to be dynamic, a, a static dash, and then a dynamic ID. And that's all within the same exact route. So I actually highly suggest that you just try to figure out how to, out how to do this on your own and then um, we'll proceed with this video. So I'll give you a quick chance to pause the video. Go ahead and pause it. I assume at this point you have paused it and tried. So let's go ahead and show you exactly how to do it. So we're going to go over here and now we're going to go to the pages directory. So remember the static part is going to be slash car. So we're going to create a new folder called car. And then within here, it's going to be slash car and then slash that actual, uh, uh, you know, car and then dash ID. So over here, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file and to specify that this is going to be dynamic, we're going to say square braces name. And then right after the square braces, we're going to add a dash Then we're going to add another set of square braces and that's going to be the ID dot view. And that's exactly how we do it. Very, very simple stuff. And you can see how powerful and easy this is becoming. So over here we can create a template and now let's actually go ahead and create everything it is that we need. So we need the nav bar. So let's go over here. Let's add the nav bar. Let's go ahead and save that. And now I'm going to go to the car detail page and I'm just going to copy everything within here. So let's just copy everything here and we'll separate them into components in a moment. So let's go over here. Let's go to the card detail page. Go ahead and save that. And let's see if this is working a okay now. So I'm going to go to slash car and then slash. And I'm going to say, I'm going to say slash 
Toyota, doesn't really matter, and then slash five. And if I enter, ta-da, you can see we actually get the page. So it does indeed work. Now let's go ahead and quickly separate them into their own separate components. So let's go over here, the car hero itself. So we're going to go ahead and grab this and uh, let's go here. Actually, where, where does this end? It ends right here. That should be okay. Sorry for the confusion. There's a div right here that starts right here. So this actually should be, this should end right here. So sorry for the confusion, everybody. And honestly, I don't even think we need that div. We can probably just remove it, but we'll just leave it just for, for the sake of leaving it. So let's go ahead over here and we'll just grab this car hero. And let's go over here and let's create another component. Now the issue is we already have a hero component. So what we can do now is we can just say add another directory. We can call this details. So car detail. And then over here we can just say hero.view. And I'm like, I'm going to go over here, just add a template and add all of that HTML within there. And then over here, I can just say car and then it's detail and then hero. And if I were to go ahead and render that and refresh, you can see I still get the exact same thing. And I believe I can probably get rid of this div as well as this. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and refresh. Yeah, everything's looking good. Okay, so now let's go to the attributes. So uh, let's go here. We're going to go ahead and cut that out. And we're also going to put that in the details directory. We're going to say attributes.view. And let's create a template. Go ahead and create that. And then over here, we're going to say, just right below this, we're going to say car detail attributes. Attributes. So now we can go ahead and get rid of these comments. And now let's do the description as well. So we're going to go here, grab that description. Let's go back over here. We'll say description dot view. Go ahead and create, we need a template for this. So template, paste that in there, save that. And of course the contact as well is the last thing that we need. So let's grab that contact. And let's go back up here. We'll say contact dot view template and we'll say paste that in there. All right. So that's pretty much it. So now we can just say car detail and we'll say description and then car detail contact. There we go. Looking good, looking good. So we have pretty much created all of our different pages as well as the components for them. We should be extremely happy at this point. Now that we have created all of our different pages, I want to have the ability to navigate within these pages within the actual application itself and not have to well redirect to whatever page I want to go to. So for example, if I want to go to that uh, slash city slash dynamic city name over here, if I want to go to this page, what I don't want to do is actually have to type that into the URL itself. What I want to do is I want to just say Ottawa search and have it move me there itself. Another thing that I would like is to have this nav bar be functional. So whenever I click on this, I would very much like it for it to go back to the home page. So let's actually begin with the nav bar because that's, that's actually the simplest thing that we can do right now. So the nav bar, very simply, whenever we click on this, I just want it to go back to the slash route, the home page. And what we can do to do that is we can go to our nav bar component. So let's go to our nav bar component right over here. And what we can do here is we can actually make the href slash. So we can make it slash href. And now when I go over here, you can see that it takes me back to this page. However, just like in view, where when we ever add an href, instead of adding a view link or a view, uh, a, a router link, instead of using that, what it's going to do is it's going to refresh our page, which is not that great. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to use a built-in Nux component called Nux link. 
So Nux link right over here. And that's going to allow us to navigate across pages, but not have to refresh our page every time. And it does that with something called universal rendering, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So we're gonna change the href from not being href, but instead to two. And notice that we didn't have to import this in. Again, this is something that was auto imported. So now if I go ahead and actually save this, and let me go to another page now, let's go to this page. And then if I go over here, you can see it got redirected back to this page, which is terrific. We got the nav bar working, but now I want to get this search bar working over here. And for this search bar, we can't really use a Nux link because we need to programmatically change the path. So let's go to our search bar. So let's go over here to car and we're going to go to search bar. And over here, this is where we're going to dynamically change the path itself. So we're going to go and we're going to have to utilize uh, a script tag. So we're going to say script and we're going to say setup. So script set up like so. And how do we typically do this? Well, we typically do this by first adding a V model. So we can go over here, we can add a V model. We can call this city. And then over here, we can create a const city is equal to ref. So we can actually store the value. Now notice we don't have to import ref in. Again, this is something that is auto imported. So that's the very first thing that we're gonna do. And then typically what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and just say const, and then we're gonna get router from the use router composable. And then what we're gonna do is whenever we click this button right here, Let's go ahead and just say at click. Let's just say um, handle search. Let's create a function called handle search here. So we can say const handle search. And over here, what we can very simply do is just say um, router. So router dot push. And then we can push in the path that we want. So over here, what is it the, the path that we want? Well, we want to go to slash city. And then in this case, it's going to be slash city dot value. And then over here, we're going to say slash car. Now there's going to be no make, so we're not going to add that part. And that's pretty much actually all it is that we need to do to get that to work. So if I were to say Ottawa in here and say search, you can see that that does indeed work and take me to where I need to be. Okay, so this is good. However, this actually isn't that necessary with Nux. So Nux actually makes this a little bit simpler. So instead of using the use router composable to go ahead and actually add this path, instead we can actually kind of completely get rid of this use router composable and instead use the navigate to function that again is gonna be auto imported for us. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this out and just paste it right in here inside of the navigate to function. And now I'm gonna do just a quick little refresh here. Let's change this to, uh, let's change it to Los Angeles. And if I go ahead and click search, you can see now it has navigated me back to Los Angeles. So that is great and that is amazing. Now there is one potential issue and this doesn't really relate to Nux. I can go ahead at this point and just search and it's gonna take me to the slash city. And let me just zoom in here, slash city, slash, slash, and then car. And that's because the city is empty. So one thing that we can also do just as a quick precaution is check if the city is indeed, um, is indeed not empty. So what we can do here is we can say, if the city dot value is empty, then what we can do is we can uh, return early. And another thing that we can also do just so we can show some sort of user feedback is we can create another piece of state and I can just say city error. And for now, I'm gonna say city error is false. And then over here, I'm just gonna say return city error dot value is equal to true. And now what we can do here is we can go to this input over here. We can add a dynamic class. So we can say class and we can say, if we have a city error, then what we wanna do is we want to render a border that is red. So we can say here, actually let's go to Tailwind just to, just to show you exactly how we do this. So we're gonna go over here and we're gonna just search for border and we're gonna say border color, for example. 
and I want a, a red border. So let's just scroll all the way over here. So kind of a border like this. So this is the class that we're going to use, which is going to be border red and uh, 500. So border red 500 like so. And also we need to add a border. So I believe we also add this class over here and then we'll just say else then add nothing at all. So let's go ahead and just quickly just see if that works. Let's go back home. Let's zoom out. Let's go to tur oh, let's actually not add anything. And there we go. You can see we get this kind of red state. I know it's kind of ugly right over here. That's completely fine. Who cares? But you can see that we actually get this red color, which is amazing. But now if I go to Toronto or whatever, you can see now. And if I go back, everything is completely fine. In this video, what I want to do is focus in on this page right over here. So right now the path is slash city slash Ottawa slash car. Now let's quickly talk about exactly which portion of this page is going to change the most whenever we change the path. Well, this sidebar is going to change very, very little. It's still going to have the location, the make, the price, but maybe these values are going to be different and they're just going to be extracted from the uh, route itself. So this is going to change very, very little. However, it's going to be this portion that changes dramatically. So if I change it from Ottawa to Toronto, we're going to have a bunch of different cars that exist in Toronto rather than Ottawa. If I change it from Toyota to uh, Volvo, then we're only going to show Volvo cars. So I think what we need to do is change our routing structure so that this portion right over here that changes the most is actually going to be a nested route. So let's, let me go ahead and quickly try to explain this by, well, going through it. So right over here, we're going to go to our city. And remember, we have the city slash dynamic city slash car and then make. Now within this city directory, I'm going to create another file and I'm going to call this car.view. So car.view like so. And this is actually going to conflict with the car.view that we have over here because then this is going to be slash city slash well the dynamic city slash car and then and this should be a, and then over here we have the slash car dot view and then over here we also have slash city slash dynamic city and then slash car and we also have an optional make so it's going to conflict and we'll fix that confliction a little bit later so we're going to add a template here and we're pretty much going to add exactly what we had but this time inside of this car dot view file so I'm going to go ahead and add the nav bar. I'm going to add the div. We're going to add the uh, car, so uh, car sidebar. But now what we're going to do, so now what we're going to do is right over here, instead of actually rendering the car cards, what we're going to do is we're going to render a Nux page. So a Nux page like so. And then over here within our make, we're going to remove all of this stuff. So we're going to remove the nav bar. So let's remove the nav bar. We're going to remove this. Let's remove that. Let's remove this. We're going to literally keep, we're going to remove everything except for the car card and maybe have a div right here. So I have that div. So that's, that's what we're going to do. And so what's going to happen now is we're going to go to, it's going to render the car.view file. And then we're going to have this Nux page. And now any other path that we have in there, so right now we're at the slash car and any other path over here that we have is going to actually render right here inside of this Nux page. So initially the root Nux page is going to render all of our different pages, but now any other path that is after car is going to be rendered in this Nux page because we have this nested route. Now in this case, we actually do have a slash car slash uh, 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 make, which is dynamic and optional. And so it's going to go ahead and render this. So eventually we're going to actually achieve the exact same thing. So let me just go ahead and prove this to you by doing a little quick refresh and ta-da, you can see we still have our make and we still have our car. And just to kind of really make this as clear as possible, I am going to go ahead and I'm going to remove this Nux page. And now you can see that that component is completely gone. So if I were to add it back, it is back. And now let me just go ahead and actually just rename this for now to like make but static. And so now if I go to slash whatever, 
it's not going to know what that page is. However, if I go to slash make, it's going to know what that page is and it's going to render that. And if I go ahead and add another page, now let's just say hello.view. And I'm just going to say template div and then h1, hello, whatever. And now if I go to slash hello, you can see I'm going to have to refresh the page here, unfortunately. Or maybe refresh it. I think it should work. Nope, it does not. So let's go over here. Let's refresh the whole thing. It's kind of unfortunate that it makes me refresh the whole time because I'm going to have to delete those later. But now I hope you guys can understand. If I go to slash car slash hello, as it loads up, we'll just play with a circle. You can see now we get this over here. So if I change this back to make, we get that. All right. So I hope that it is nice and clear. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete this for now. We do not need that. So I'll remove the trash and we're going to rename this back to what it was before. So I hope you guys get the point of nested components. The last thing that I would like to do in this section is change the titles of each particular page. So if you were to look at your tabs right now, you can see we get this really ugly title, localhost 3002 slash city slash Ottawa slash car slash make. Not a very pretty title. And same over here, you know, nothing about this is pretty at all. So I wanna go ahead and actually change the titles and it is going to be remarkably easy to do with Nux 3. So let's go over here and I'm going to go to the, uh, let's go to right over here. Let's go to our very first page. And I want to change the title so that as soon as you go to the home page, it should say car trader. So over here, what we're going to do is we're going to create a script tag. We're going to say setup, and we're going to use a built in Nux composable called use head. We're going to go ahead and invoke this. And then we're going to pass in a bunch of options. Specifically, we're going to pass in the title option. And then over here, we're going to say car trader, like so. And that's actually all it is that we need to do. So now if you look at your actual tab over here, you can see that it says car trader rather than, you know, localhost 3000. So now let's go ahead and actually do the exact same thing over here. So I'm going to go to Ottawa and I am going to search over here. And we're not getting anything. And there we go. I'm not sure why that was happening. Let's go back here. Let's search Ottawa. There we go. So it was just a little uh, glitch there. And I actually want to change this so that, well, what, what do we have over here? So if I go to Toronto, what I wanted to have, I wanted to say cars in Ottawa. So cars in Ottawa. That's what I wanted to say. So let's go over here to that particular page which is going to be this page right here. So we're going to go to this page and we're going to go over here. And we're going to say script setup. And we're going to go ahead and just say use head. And we're going to say title. And this is going to be a dynamic title. So we're going to say cars and then in, and then Ottawa, we're gonna grab it from the route. So we're gonna say const route is equal to use route, like so. And we're gonna say cars in, and then we're gonna say route. And to actually grab the city, we're gonna say slash params, and then slash city, because that's what we called it here, city, the, the variable name. And we're also going to capitalize this in case it's not capitalized. So we're going to say dot two, and then we're going to say uh, two. Okay, so we can't necessarily, there's no function to capitalize this. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to do this on the fly here. We're going to say JavaScript. We're going to say JavaScript function to capitalize. Uh, to capitalize, we're just gonna say that. Okay, let's see if that works. So we're gonna go to Stack Overflow. And, all right, this is going to capitalize. All right, so that's gonna capitalize the first letter. 
not really what I want here. I wanted to capitalize everything. So capitalize, let's just say title. Convert string to title case with JavaScript. All right. So let's see here. Okay, this looks like a good solution. So we'll just say to title case. Just grab this function over here. And I am going to just put this function right here. And we're going to say, we're just going to wrap this with to title case. To title case. I'm going to go ahead and add that in there. Okay. So now we should see. If I were to go back here, you see we get cars in Ottawa, but I actually want to make this a little bit more dynamic. So if I actually add the make, instead of having cars, I want to say something like Buicks in Ottawa. So if I add slash Buicks, it should say Buicks in Ottawa. So this actually is going to be pretty easy as well. So we're just going to go over here and we're just going to say dollar sign. And this time we need to check if the route dot params dot make is even there. So if we have the make itself, then what we want to do is we want to say to title case and actually pass in the route dot params dot make. Else what we want to do is we'll just say cars, just generic cars. All right. So that's pretty much all it is that we need to do. So I'm just going to kind of, uh, let me zoom out of here a bit so you can really see that zoom out so you can kind of see the whole thing. And actually if I save, you can see it auto saved it. So this is how it should look. So now you can see it says cars in Ottawa, but if I go to slash Buicks, it says Buicks in Ottawa or Buick in Ottawa, plural. Okay, so this is great. And now the last thing that I wanna do is whenever I click on a particular, um, a particular car, it should take me to the slash car and then slash whatever, let's say it was Buick and then five. So this is just going to be the actual name of the car itself. So let's go over here and we're going to also use a use head for this. So let's just say script setup and we'll say use head and title. And this one we're going to say, let's go ahead and just say const route is equal to use route. And then over here, we're just gonna say the name of the car itself. So it's just gonna be route dot uh, params dot and uh, params dot, and then the, the actual name of the car, which is the name. Now, of course, I'm gonna want to uh, title case this as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this function and we'll, we'll, we'll think of a, we'll, have a better way of actually putting this function in one place instead of having it in, in just, you know, copying and pasting it throughout components. But for now, we'll just do that. So we're going to go over here and we'll just title case this. And now you can say Buick right over here. Okay, so this is looking pretty, pretty good. And that actually concludes the section on file base routing. All right, everybody, welcome to a brand new section. And in this section, we're going to mainly focus in on cleaning up our code a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin with looking into all of the different view files that pertain to our pages. So let's go into our pages directory. And what I did is I opened up the index.view, which is the home page. I then opened up the car.view, which is going to be the car listing page. And then I opened up this page right over here, the name-id.view, which is actually the car itself. And I want to kind of just explore the code at this point. So let's begin with the index.view. And I want to focus in on the HTML, not the uh, script tag. So let's go over here. So we have the template, we have the div. And over here, we have our navbar component. And then we have our car hero. So let's actually look at a common pattern when we go to the car.view. So we have our template, we have our div, and then we have our nav bar at the very top. And then we have our div that's going to contain all of the HTML that pertains to this page. Now, if I go back over here, you can see the exact same thing. We have our nav bar, and then we have a div that contains all of the different components that live inside of this page. 
So what are we noticing here? We're noticing kind of a common pattern. So throughout these three pages, we always render the navbar component. And importantly, very importantly, we always render it in the exact same position. So it's always at the very top. So you can see here, the navbar component is at the very top. The navbar component is at the very top. And the navbar component is at the very top. And most likely, if we add more and more pages, we're going to want to have that navbar component be at the very top. And of course, we are going to want to render it. So won't it be nice if we can somehow abstract this away? If somehow we don't have to actually render the nav bar for every single page, we can just have Nux figure out that I want to have a nav bar for every single page and I want it to be located at the very top of the page. So how can we do that? Well, we can actually do that with something known as layouts. So layouts allow us to lay out our page and we can also have a default layout. And I think it will make a lot more sense once we actually go ahead and code out our very first layout. So layouts only work inside of a layouts directory. So let's go ahead and create a directory and it has to be called layouts. And as you can imagine, it's, it's going to be a very similar reason as to why this has to be called component and why this has to be called pages. Nux is going to understand that the view files inside of this layouts directory are layouts and it's going to do some magic behind the scenes. So let's go ahead over here and we're going to do layouts and we're going to create a new file. Now, typically we don't really care what we call the file. I guess in the pages we do care depending on the path, but over here, this actually matters a lot. We have to call it default.view to define a default layout that is going to exist for every single page in our application. So let's go ahead and create that page. And this is just going to be a regular, well, view file. So we're going to have a template, a div. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to define at the very top, I always want to render the nav bar. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to define the slot component. Now, this isn't any Nux specific component. This is something that we already see in view three. It is is in essence, what this is, is all of the HTML that is going to be housed right over here inside of these specific files. So right now the slot component would be all of this HTML right over here. Similarly, the slot component will be this over here. So now what we're saying is, hey, I want the nav bar and I want everything, all the other HTML that's rendered over here. So let's go ahead and actually save this. And in order to actually get this to work, we need to go over here to the app dot view and we need to wrap this with a Nux layout. Just saying that, hey, I want my Nux page to use the Nux layout. So let's go over here and right away, we actually notice something interesting. We have two nav bars and then we have our hero right over here. If I were to click on, uh, let's say Toronto, now we're to go search, you can see again, two nav bars and we have our search. And if I were to click on a specific car, Oh yeah, we didn't make this clickable yet. Yeah, that's later on, don't worry. Uh, let's go over here, we'll say car, and we'll just go to Jeep one. And over here you can see we have two nav bars. And this actually makes sense. So what this is doing is it's taking this default layout, and where is that? It's taking this default layout and it's applying it to every single page. So what it's doing is it's adding this nav bar and then it's adding all of the HTML that is within the page. And that also includes an additional nav bar. So the whole point of adding the layout is so we can remove the need of adding that additional nav bar. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually do that. So we don't have those double nav bars. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove those double nav bars and let's go over here. And we're gonna go ahead and remove that. And there we go. So now you can see we have pretty much drastically cleaned up our code. And you can imagine if our Nux application is getting huge, maybe we have a hundred different pages. Now we don't have to add that nav bar component at the very top every single time. So we learned about layouts, which is great. You can see it's a really nice way to clean up our code. However, 
right now I'm going to go ahead and just focus in on some of these pages over here. So let's first look at this page over here. So we have our nav bar and we also have this hero. And then let's go to this page right here. Now you can see we have the nav bar, but you can see that all of the content, no matter how much content that we have, is always going to be confined from right over here to right over here. So right here to right here. And it's not going to span the entire width of our screen. And if I were to go to, let's say, uh, I'm going to go, let's, let's just pick a car here. So slash slash car and then we're going to say jeep one you can see here this is the exact same thing so uh, uh it's, it's always going to span right over here it's not going to we're always going to have these white spaces and it's going to span kind of right in the middle and this is actually done by having this div element right here so this div has all of the tailwind classes that are needed to have that stylistic effect and they only really exist in right now two of our pages. Our main page doesn't have this exact div, this, this exact div element. Now, in cases where we have maybe some pages, you know, a group of pages that follow a particular layout, but others that don't, we obviously don't want to have a default layout for all of them. But instead, what we want to do is we want to have a custom layout and then apply that custom layout to those group of pages. So again, in our case, these two pages have this div right over here. And I think it would be nice to kind of abstract it into a layout. So again, what we're going to need to do is define a custom layout. And let's go ahead and do that. So custom layout can be called whatever it is that we want. You can call them banana.view, uh, whatever.view. I'm just going to go ahead and just call them custom.view just to, you know, kind of kind of ensure in your mind that this is a custom layout. I'm going to go ahead and just define the div, the template, and then I am going to go and grab this div right here. So I'm go ahead and just grab that. I'm going to go ahead and paste it in here. So I'm going to go ahead and paste it in here and let's add the closing div as well. So closing div like so. And so over here is where I'm going to house the slot. So over here is where I'm going to house the slot, like so. So now what I want to do is I want to actually utilize this custom layout within these two pages. So what we're going to need to do is actually override the default layout. And to do that, we can define and we can define the, let me just scroll down here. We can go ahead and define the page meta. And this is something that is auto imported. And over here, we're going to call it and we're going to pass in the object, which is going to be the meta. And we're going to specify the layout and the layout is going to be the name of the file. In this case, custom. So let's go ahead and actually save this. And if I were to refresh, you can see we get this really wonky effect. And the reason why we're getting this effect here is now what we're going to need to do is remove this right here. So let's remove this div because we don't need that anymore. And if I were to save it, now you can see it looks exactly the same, except it doesn't have the nav bar. So it's very important to understand that what we did here was we overwritten the default layout. So we're not going to be using that anymore. So if we still want to have the nav bar in our custom layouts, we're going to need to specify it. So very simply, we can just say here, nav bar like so. And now we have our nav bar. And now over here, you can see that the, the code is actually getting significantly less. It, it's a lot nicer. Now we don't have that big div that's in our way. We just have the, the parent div and we have all of this content as well. So you can see our code is getting significantly cleaner. And we can do the, of course, the exact same thing over here. So we can instead say define, uh, and then it was cust or define page meta. And over here we can say layout and I'm going to say custom. And now we can go ahead and just remove this div. So let's remove that div. We'll remove this. And there we go. That's pretty much all it is that we need to do. So now if I were to go to here and let's just say Houston, Houston and search. And you can see that it looks a little bit wonky here. So let's see why that is. So define page meta. We have the layout. Let's do a refresh. 
there we go so, so, so it just wasn't refreshed so you can see here now it is indeed working and we have significantly uh, 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 reduced uh, the complexity of our code another thing that i would like to clean up is this right over here so you can see that this function we're using it in multiple different places so we're using it right over here in this page and we're also using it right over here in this page so what i would like to do is kind of abstract it and put it in one file so we can just use it and import it into the files that we need and what we can do is we can actually store this function this functionality that we're going to utilize throughout multiple different components or pages or both we can actually store them in composables so composables are places where we can store state as well as uh, different pieces of functionality so i'm going to go over here i'm going to create a composables directory and it has to be called composables because nux is going to understand that all of the different files in here are composables and do the auto importing and i'm going to call this composable file use utilities so typically composables start with use and over here, I'm going to say use utility. I'm, I'm trying to spell this correctly. Utilities. I think that's how you spell it. And then I'm going to say dot js. So this is just going to be a regular function that we are going to export. So we're going to say use utilities. And this is just going to be a regular function like so. And we're going to grab this piece of functionality, which is going to be the to title case. And we're going to place that in there. And then at the very bottom of the function, we're going to return it. So we're going to say to title case. So everything should be working a okay now. But now what we can do is instead of defining the function over here, what we can do is actually utilize that composable. So we can say const curly braces for destructuring use utilities and we can go ahead and invoke it and we can actually get to title case, that to title case function. And now we can go ahead and remove this. And now if I were to actually refresh, you can see that everything is still capitalized in the tab. And we can actually do the exact same thing now in the other case where we use it, which is going to be the this file right over here. So over here we have uh, use title case. And we use that right over here in the use head as well. So instead, I'm going to go ahead and just paste that in there. And I'm going to remove this, save that. And I'm going to go to jeep let's go to slash car slash jeep slash one and you can see that jeep is still capitalized so we can use composables to kind of abstract away all of this repetitive code which is always great